my music stems from my, my multicultural, multinational identity. My father's family comes from Northwest India, from Punjab. On my mother's side, I'm British, I'm English. So you're looking at a South Asian man and an English woman meeting and falling in love in British East Africa, you know? And if it weren't for the British Empire, it wouldn't exist. I was raised with elements of Punjabi culture and Indian culture more generally, but also of a Eurocentric education in terms of the languages that I was speaking as a child. From a very young age, I was surrounded by books and recordings and this really broad spectrum. And even before I'd gotten to the United States, I was already in love with the music of Duke Ellington and Count Basie. And then, of course, now I'm in the country where that music comes from when I immigrate to the United States. And I've really endeavored to bring all of those elements together and also express what to me are really important values of social justice, of uh, mystical inquiry, of universal truths and these kinds of things. <laughs> When you propose and design a residency, you hope that uh, the artist involved is going to really be all in on it. And Arun was that and, and more. Over the three and a half months that he was here, he became a part of the community. He just embraced it and uh, his answer to everything was, yes, let's do it, which was just uh, yeah, inspiring and wonderful. Members of the community came out to hear, okay, what's this about? This guy Arun Luthra, he's from New York, and what's this conical jazz thing? What is it? And they came out and they embraced me and they were so happy to hear the music. <laughs> Perfect, all right? So that was a playful rhythmic structure that we, that we did with call and answer. Konakol is uh, the art form of vocalizing rhythms, which comes from Carnatic music, which is the classical music of South India. Every syllable corresponds to a physical way of striking your percussion instrument. Eventually, over many years, it has evolved into its own performance art form, independent of a percussion instrument. And that is the way I perform it. One class meeting each week would be on the practical side of learning how to perform conical, so students had a very uh, tangible experience. And how did you get them to roll their tongues like that? Wow, good question. Maybe just by trying to imitate you. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, you can, you can keep on exploring things like this. Try to find the groupings that fits for two beats or three beats or four beats, and then practice according to sticking to the feeling of the groupings. So, dum, dum, We've been doing this in a eight beat cycle, right? So now Selvabai is telling us let's try it with a nine beat cycle. So what do you have to do is tatang tadiki rakatam dot that instead of that you need to add takita over there also. In 14 weeks, they really learned Konokol and they really could do it. It was just, it was just really, it knocked me out. As an instructor myself, you know, I struggle with some of our Western ways of teaching rhythms to our students. And using Konokol um, as a rhythmic tool is something that I'll be taking with me and, and using in my, uh, in my various teachings um, going forward. Being able to express rhythmic patterns in Konokol syllables, I was able to integrate it into the other classes that I was learning. The other meeting would be on contextualizing Conical, and that touched on many, many different things. I was actually building on fusing Conical and beatboxing uh, uh, and, and making it presentable to a, a, a crowd of devotees. I 
think that's why it's very critical to understand the importance of experience and the time of where per is, is um, created because it shapes what you hear. And even if you're just looking at genres, same thing. Yeah. It shapes and affects the music that you hear. We embraced this concept of interdisciplinary by taking this rhythmic tradition and relating it to all sorts of aspects of the human experience and how we apprehend the world. All of a sudden we can use rhythm to talk about social justice. We can use rhythm to talk about biology. We can use rhythm to talk about physics. We can use rhythm to talk about astronomy. We can use rhythm to talk about human interconnection. The rhythm of speech, poetry, all of these things. I thought I knew what rhythm was coming in. I'm a percussionist. And then we started talking about it and I was like, oh my gosh, learning how to look at the world differently. It was just really amazing. Rhythm like really is everything. That's just been super eye-opening to me. So we're seeing that rhythm is manifest in all these different aspects of the natural world, human experience, our biology, like our heartbeats, our footsteps. How can we then express those things musically, as well as talking about them conceptually? How do we connect? Combat exclusions, be authentic. Cultural fusions, honest inclusion, break the inclusion. Music is the truth. Tap in, create beyond aesthetic. Music transfusion between us, it's a foregone conclusion. The Capstone Project of the class was built on uh, what the students learned about Connor Cole, and then bringing to that their own creative practice. They went inside and found what for them personally was a way to express the work that we'd done together. He en encouraged us with our final projects to do collaborations in, in um, whether it be fashion or visual art or other mediums. Some of our students, it was their first time ever stepping on a stage and performing music, and they had their nerves, but they actually were able to work through that. So there was a, an educational process in, in that, where they could have that, that performance experience, which not a lot of courses at UW, especially in just musicology, afford that opportunity. And the entire experience of working on it and then playing on Tuesday night live. And for me, that was very profound. And that was, I'll be honest, that was probably the happiest move I've been this entire semester. Uh, uh, we will keep playing together for we're gonna, sure. Yeah, we're, we're uh, gonna jam together for sure. So it was a very rich experience and uh, it really kind of spoke to the uh, foundational principle of the university as a place that brings all these different disciplines together for, in the creates cross-pollination. What I experienced were these group pieces and then some individual pieces all around Conical but very much your own identity, very much where the subject matter connected with you, clearly you created a sense of liberation, right, and, and, and authority that students could just walk in whatever direction they chose to. We took the idea of interdisciplinary and blew it up and, and made it this expansive, open world that we could explore. In the five years that I have been here, this is the first of this kind of class that I'm seeing. So really, really, really glad that this happened. Um, but I hope there's more opportunities like this for me, for other students who identify differently than the majority to, to feel like they belong, because this was celebrating my culture, and that was super cool. And what was even more cool for me was that there were so many other people who wanted to share in it and truly respect it and be curious about it, ask and enjoy it. I almost didn't take this class. I can't, I can't imagine if I hadn't. Oh, yeah, I, sure. I didn't, would not have known what I was missing.
Thank you.